In today's video of me standing in an empty room by myself, I'm going through 10 of LEGO's forgotten themes. LEGO has had a long history, and with that, they have had a monumental amount of crap they have tried to push onto you, the consumer. A lot of those things did not stick around, and you probably haven't heard of them. For example, Avatar. Did you know that the, not, not the blue monkey hair intercourse ones, but the blue arrow ones. They also did the blue monkeys. Those are those are out right now, but they the beforehand, they did the last airbender ones. While I could potentially agree that these sets aren't terribly terrific, they do, a, a counter, they do exist. The sets are a bit blocky, kind of jagged, and really outdated, and the figures are out of this world ugly, but much like your mother with you, you have to love them because you're not gonna get another. On the other side of the coin, there was Spongebob, released the same year with its own lineup of sets, which other themes sold better would last longer, and seeing since we only got two Avatar sets and a whole host of Spongebob sets, you can see which one did better. Spongebob being the victor shouldn't shock anybody. It's right now on like its 98th season, while Avatar The Last Airbender ended before part of you were even born. That the sets were anything terrific, half of them were remakes with two crusty crabs and three pineapple houses. There wasn't a whole lot of originality going on here. This cho- this cho flying Dutchman. <laughs> this cheapified version of the Flying Dutchman doesn't really do a whole lot for Spongebob, but if you want, you can throw it to Pirates of the Caribbean, where they never got a Flying Dutchman, add Davy Jones and his whole crew on it, and you, you can go up against the Black Pearl. Nickelodeon wasn't the only channel out there getting sets made for them. There was another network, Cartoon, featuring the likes of Ben 10. And that is all there is to say on the likes of Ben 10. Well, that's not entirely true, but with only six sets on store shelves for less than a year, having a handful of promotional items or, God forbid, fugly combiner models isn't much of a saving grace. Cartoon Network and Lego also made four Powerpuff Girl sets, but seeing since scientifically no one likes Powerpuff Girls, they did not sell very well. Lego hasn't just focused on American cartoons. Sometimes they've gone overseas and seen what the Japanese are cooking up. Ma, it's not a cartoon, it's an anime. Speed Racer. It, it did exist. As in, it existed in a state of, aww, you didn't even really try, did you? With the cars looking like they're in a half-finished state, the larger sets being way past empty, and the Yellow Racer X car being the exact same model in two, count it, two different sets. And I'm not even over-exaggerating, it's not two different designs that look vaguely or really similar. They, these are the instructions. It's for the two different sets for the same exact build. Worst of all, the sets were based on a movie from 2008. The movie from 2008 was based on an anime from Japan from the 1980s. Um, actually, the show's from the 1960s, and it's based on the um, manga. Um, actually, I don't give a flying f I have no idea what any of this means, but I really like the shirt with a monkey on it. This next thing is much like the History Channel and TLC. They have now divulged into React channels and the purest form of garbage entertainment, the Discovery Channel. But, but, but before the Discovery Channel was Alaskan gold digging or Alaska's bush people or Alaskan the last frontier and my mama's in Alaskan and Bigfoot rescued me in Alaska. It was the Discovery Channel before people discovered Alaska with sets promoting exploration and learning, the new discoveries of the Martian surface, flying further and farther into the depths of space man living where no human has before. Admittedly, all of these sets have seen significant upgrades in recent years, but where else are you gonna get a NASA-themed astronaut with a hiking backpack for $100? Yes, sure, the sets don't look great now, but still. Things are based on science and space travel and a $100 astronaut minifigure, well before the Discovery Channel discovered gold on the Alaskan side of the moon. I need to get off the topic of milking a cow dry. In 2014, LEGO released The Simpsons. Only being around until 2015, with a brief reinsurgence in 2018 with Brickheads, the sets really just consisted of The Simpsons House and The Quickie Mart. There were the Brickheads, like I mentioned, but the, the big thing about this theme was the two CMF minifigure series that LEGO released. With this collectible minifigure series, LEGO released most of the kooky, crazy cast of The Simpsons, and you could even get a few alternate variants, like Bartman, or... Uh, Homer with a necktie. Um, actually, the necktie Homer came from The Simpsons. I meant the Valentine's Day Homer, whom also has a necktie. Now, I don't know how well The Simpsons theme sold, but I do know they have a chance of coming back because of Disney. Now, Disney, seeing since they own everything, a lot of these themes you've probably heard of, but Disney, surprisingly, has been around for a long time in the realm of Lego. The very first license Lego ever produced was Disney with a wooden pool toy of Pluto, and then also Davy Crockett's log cabin. I think it also came with a gun. There aren't any pictures of that online, and I'm pretty sure that's just Blinkin' Log, but we'll, we'll let Lego have this one. Much, much later, Lego produced Disney's Baby Mickey, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a baby Lego toy meant for babies with Baby Mickey and Baby Minnie. That, that's it. That is all there was to it. They're like little, 
Oh, a little fat bottom boy right there. Now, just a little bit after that, we got something a lot more interesting. Disney's Mickey Mouse. Not very creative with the name. This type of exclusive figure was only used for Mickey and Minnie and was never seen or used anywhere else again. While the sets are quite rudimentary, there's something about them that's rather appealing. Hey, do you have a quick second for me to ask a question? Oh, did I just... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt this video that you were watching and clearly really enjoying. I'll, ma I'll make it quick. I just wanted to say if you aren't subscribed and you'd like to, feel free to do so. It's free. But if you would rather pay money, I have a memberships. You can... <laughs> this is so dumb. Sorry for interrupting. I will put you right back where you were like nothing happened. From the year 2012 to 2014, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was quite a big theme. While I am a fan of TMNT, I gotta say I am happy that they didn't base it off one of their subpar outings that they've done in the past, like the cheesy 80 movies or the live action TV show or that newer just trash TV show or the Michael Bay movie. God. Damn it! While the first half of the Turtles was based on Nickelodeon's as of right then new show, which was pretty decent, the second half of the Turtle sets was based on the first Michael Bay movie of the live action Turtles. While the sets based on the movie are quite well done, and you can hold the figures and not scream at its uncanny monstrous appearances, they just don't hold up to the cartoon aesthetic of the Turtles, and I, I just don't really care to hear ghetto Michelangelo talking about Megan Fox's rack. I should probably just, just probably probably mention that two of the figures from this line are thousands and thousands of dollars. Yay! I don't get political on this channel, but there are just some things you simply cannot ignore. And when you make a Scooby-Doo TV show without the f dog, it's not a Scooby-Doo TV show, now is it? That being said though, the Lego sets are pretty good because they actually have the goddamn dog! Oh, and the sets are pretty well designed. Not only does a Scooby-Doo themed thing have Scooby-Doo the dog, it has seven different heads and two body types to make a whole assortment of different kinds of Scooby-Doos for Scooby-Doo. That seems like a pretty good win to me. The theme had a pretty healthy catalog of sets with loads of iconic villains and locations, helping make the Scooby outing one of the most reference heavy lineups from almost any Lego theme. Although spreading mystery gang throughout the entire theme was a bit tedious. To complete the team, you had to spend just shy of $200 on the three most expensive sets. But who can complain when you can get a brick-built sandwich for $24.99? Now, they admittedly did go a little, little bit off the rails with the vehicles. The mystery machine, obviously you need it. And you get a pass for the mini mystery machine and the miniature version of the mini mystery machine, but it's a bit much with the mystery motorcycle or the mystery boat, the mystery truck, the mystery plane. The mystery mech. At this point, the ratio of mystery gang to machines is completely out of whack. Now, a little bit of a warning. If you want to try to get any of the Scooby-Doo stuff, Velma is quite expensive. She's like $80, maybe even more. And she'll probably only go up, seeing since the other Velma is really rising the value of original Velma right now. With all of that being said, have you heard about all of these themes before? Or are there other themes that I should have mentioned? I don't know, maybe. Maybe someone didn't know about it, and that maybe you do. Who knows? Until next time, make sure to check out my newest TV show on the Discovery Channel, Building Legos in Alaska.